stronger. I feel smarter. I feel younger. Um, I feel more dangerous. And I just, that's where I am right now. I'm excited about this season. Mm. Okay. Oh, he feels more dangerous. It's a Feel Good Friday here on Good Morning Football. We'll right, talk Ross. about Russell Wilson. It's June 11th. Yeah, Nate Burleson is here. Peter Schrager, Kyle Brandt from Australia. Let's get right into it, guys. We talked a lot about Aaron Rodgers. I, a couple of weeks ago on a Feel Good Friday, said Russell Wilson should be feeling good because no one's talking about him anymore. It's all surrounding the Packers drama. Well, let's jump back to the West Coast for the lead block. Lead block. Lead block. Lead block, lead block. All right, a couple months ago, yes, the NFL world was buzzing about this guy, Russell Wilson. Trade rumors... Does he want out of Seattle? Shock, horror, the whole thing. What team would he play for? We're talking about Fitz, who should go grab him. Well, yesterday, Russ finally addressed the whole deal. I think there's a lot of confusion uh, because the reality is, is that I forget, I think I was in the Bahamas or somewhere and everybody was saying that I requested a trade and that wasn't true. So we made it clear that I did not request a trade and then there was teams being flown around that I was going to go to those teams, this and that. And so, you know, I think that, you know, when you look back at it, you know, it's, it's part of, uh, I don't know, it's, again, it's part of it, um, unfortunately. Um, it, you know, and I think that, you know, more than anything else, you know, that I got my wish, you know, in the sense that I've always wanted to play here. That's, that's where I am. That's where I am right now. A lot to unpack here. Nate, I'm going to start with you. What do you make? Uh, of what Russell Wilson said yesterday. Well, it reminds me of a conversation I had. I, I think I was in Turks and Caicos, you know, um, at my uh, <laughs> villa. Um, shout out to Russell Wilson yeah. with the humble brag. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was in the Bahamas and uh, people were talking about me. So, you know, we just had a conversation about my life. Now, nah, uh, Russ, you know, I love you. Uh, listen, I do feel like the trade talk was real. And I, I do feel like whether it was from Russell Wilson or his camp, maybe his representation, um, throwing out a few teams out there to make it real on their side, too, um, which is almost like calling the Seattle Seahawks bluff. Um, and that's where it was. The fact that he's coming out and saying, listen, um, I, feel, I feel great. I feel younger. I feel faster. I feel stronger. I feel more dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's basically like him talking to his lady. Saying, baby, uh, I ain't going nowhere, all right? I've been working out. I got me a leather jacket and a motorcycle. I've been mm -hmm. taking these supplements. A, a few of them I got off the black market. And I'm telling you, I'm ready to rock and roll. We might even make some babies this year. So Russell Wilson is looking at the Seattle Whoa. Seahawks saying, listen, I got everything I need. I got my groove back and we might win a championship this year. I like that. As soon as the quarterback starts talking about how great he feels, that's when he's talking to not only the reflection in the mirror, but the team in the organization. We heard Big Ben do that a couple of times. As soon as we started repeating what he said about retirement, he was like, no, 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 I've been working out. I, I feel good. I, you know, I've been lifting and I, I trimmed my beard, I lost a little weight. So that's, that's the quarterback also telling the world that I'm ready to rock and roll this season. And if Russell Wilson is talking like that with a little bit of a smirk, not this big smile, the nice teddy bear Russell Wilson, I want him to be more dangerous. I said a couple of days ago that the most motivated quarterback should be Russell Wilson. Because there was trade conversation. So go out and be the villain this year. I don't want Russell Wilson to be the nice guy. Be the bad guy. Because that's when the Seahawks were good. When they were the bad guy. They had the, the Legion of Boom on one side and Russell Wilson tearing up the league on the other. I want that old thing back. Well, you're going to be waiting on that, my friend. Uh, listen, it, it, you're going to talk about it. Nate, you call it a humble brag. There's another word to describe. It's a lie. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about here, but this happens. And uh, unless he's really getting into semantics where he's like, no, 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 I didn't request a trade. I demanded a trade because that's really what I believe. And here's the thing, Nate, kind of to your point, like I think Russell Wilson, who's usually, how do I describe this? Uh, very opaque and smiley with the media and Mr. Unlimited and go Hawks and mm -hmm. really nothing. I think Russell Wilson had a human moment. And I think he was on Dan Patrick and he said, like, I'm tired of getting hit. And I love that. He's also got this thing where, like, he's been there nine years. And I think right now, player empowered more than ever, I think these players are looking around and being like, I'm kind of bored here. I'm kind of tired of it. I'm having the same conversation with the same people and the same coach. Have you sitting there at home? Have you ever had the same job for the same company for nine years like he has? You get bored. Start looking around. You get that itch. And I think he was genuinely interested in going around and getting a new team. I think there was a list. 
I know Peter's going to swing a sledgehammer in about 30 seconds when I finish up. Peter, start spitting on your hands and rubbing them together. <laughs> we need facts from you, my man, because I think Russell finally cracked in that goofy Mr. Unlimited, I'm kind of kidding and I'm sort of cheesy, sort of media persona. He said, look, I'm tired of getting bleeping hit, okay? I might want to be on a different team. And now it's all getting pulled right back. No, 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 because they didn't trade me. I never wanted to go. Yes, they did. Now, Peter, crow hop on this thing. Let's put some juice on it. Do not accept mistruths on this show. Get them, Shregs. February 25th, 2021, Adam Schefter puts out a tweet that says, Russell Wilson has told the Seahawks he wants to play in Seattle. True. But, but, if a trade were considered, the only teams he would go to are the Cowboys, the Saints, the Raiders, and the Bears. His agent, Mark Rogers, said to ESPN. So his agent on the record listed four teams. Now, yes, he said, I want to stay in Seattle, but, but these four teams are teams I'd be willing to go to. Put that in real life terms, okay? Your friend is a married man. And yep. he, he comes out and says, I want to stay married, but <laughs> but if there were four women that I would love to entertain yeah. leaving my wife for, it would be these four women on the record yep. per me. One, two, three, four. And then two months later being like, I don't know where that stuff came from. Like, it's weird. I was in the Bahamas and like, it was just weird. Yeah. People were talking yeah. about me. His agent on the record said it. So what do you want me to tell you? It was out there. And that... One tweet from Schefter set a entire thing into a land where the Bears were basically like, here's our yeah. roster, take it all. <laughs> here's our draft, take it all. Take it I all. remember the Trey Lance Pro Day in Fargo up in North Dakota. It was like John Schneider was there like the bell of the ball and every other GM was coming up to him like, so what's up, John? What, what's it going to take? How we doing? To the Seahawks' credit, they found a way to not get in the muck. They didn't entertain yep. any of these trade offers, and they just kept a steady focus on Russell Wilson is our quarterback. He's our quarterback as long as he wants to be here, and he's as long as he's our quarterback as long as we can keep him here. For Russell Wilson to come back now and act like it was the media or just some goofy, silly thing in the Bahamas that other people were talking about, I think that's a different look at reality than what really happened. I, we didn't make this up out of nowhere. This wasn't a story for three months because we wanted it to be. We didn't throw it at the wall. There was actual stuff to it, on the record stuff, yeah. from his agent who is paid to represent him. <laughs> it's got to be infuriating to media members covering the story, especially out there in Seattle. I believe him, Shregs, that he wants to stay in Seattle. I believe him that he wants to make it work. So what was this list? Because it happened, it's on the record, Shrakes. Was it just a warning shot? Because I still am as concerned as ever since this story started, you know, revealing itself that it's next season. If things don't get better, it's next off season that this heats up again. Shrakes, do you get that vibe at all? I, I, we'll see, I don't know what to believe. Apparently it's all kumbaya and this works yeah. making it a big nothing out of something. <laughs> I, so honestly, I don't know. I, they, they bring back the entire offensive line. They go and they get Gabe Jackson. They got the kid from Western Michigan as a wide receiver in the draft. Like, they're going to be good. You look at the NFC, and I was going through it yesterday. The Buccaneers are a juggernaut. I think the Rams are going to be greatly improved. Then there's a bunch of question marks around the rest of the conference. Is Rodgers coming back? I don't know. Are the Cardinals going to suddenly be great? I don't know. The Niners back? The Seahawks are like the third most reliable thing we have in the NFC right now. So they mm -hmm. could contend for a Super Bowl. I I don't think the grass is going to be greener for Russell Wilson in Chicago or Vegas or wherever. But, Kay, to your point, we'll revisit this in the next offseason. But I guess we were all just making a big deal out of it when it was really nothing. And when his agent was talking on the record offering four different cities that he'd go. Now, honey, honey, I love you. I love you. But I just, I, I got Taylor, Stacy, Tracy, and Allison just in case. But I'm totally committed. Sure you are. Sure you are not. And I think to the point that you guys are bringing up. Next year, the year after that, do you see anything? Peter, I, I don't know if I see a Super Bowl team here. I feel like they're in this constant cycle of wild card round with maybe divisional round. And I think when he went on, Patrick, and this whole thing yeah. started, coming off like a really, really deflating playoff loss at home to a so-so Rams team, like that was the future. And a lot of that is because how much money he makes. I look next year, there's nothing about them that says that they're going to go to the Super Bowl, the title game. The year after that, I just don't see it. So are we checking in every February to see how Russ is and to see if he's going to break character for five seconds and tell us how he really feels? Because that's what happened this year.
Yeah, it is important to note we didn't make it up, but he didn't. I mean, at no point was there anything suggesting that he demanded a trade. So maybe that's what he's honing in on and saying that didn't happen, that he didn't demand one. But what are your thoughts, fans? I'm sure Seahawks fans happy about it. Uh, media members, fans who needed a story in the offseason, maybe you're happy about it. Let us know at GMFB. We've got more. Uh, that's a